Hey everybody, welcome to the shop and welcome to my channel, Tucson Acres. In today's video, I'm going to take you through my 30-ton shop press budget build, along with all the extra little add-ons and upgrades. Let's get into it. Okay, so I found this shop press on Marketplace for 200 bucks. It was about an hour and away, and I screamed over the, the next day to get it. That's a heck of a deal. You can't even get the Harbor Freight piece of junk 20-ton uh, press for... I think they're 250 bucks, something like that. So you can't even touch that price. It's a fantastic price. Uh, it, it was pretty rough. These were the original cross supports for the floor or for the, the legs and they're pretty rotted, but the rest of the unit was in excellent condition. So starting off at the bottom, we got it on six inch casters or five inch casters. And I didn't necessarily want that size originally, but I'm glad I did because it makes the, the, the finger break portion of it at the perfect working height for me. Uh, I oversized the base, welded it all together, made this steel tray in here. Well, yeah, a tray. So the finger break can go in it. Now we'll work our way up. The pins, I used the, st the standard pins, except I did what a bunch of people do, and I welded washers onto it. That way they can't be bumped in. Then the next part of the project was getting the hand winch crank system for the deck to be able to raise and lower the, the deck. I just cut off some rebar. I used a fencing staple, some pulleys. Originally, I had it set up to go just straight to the, uh, the pulley drum or the crank, uh, not the pulley drum, the, um, the winch drum. And it didn't work out right because the cables were pulling too far one direction. And that's because the winch itself had to be offset. Now, when you see guys do this with a 20 ton uh, shot press, you can center this winch on that and the handle doesn't hit anything. But with this wider base or wider uh, C channel that they use on the 30 tons, uh, it just doesn't work. And I suppose I could have extended the shaft here out a little bit so that the handle was out, but I, I needed the handle to be able to clear that top bar, crossbar. So I ended up just bending this handle and uh, offsetting the mounting bracket for the winch itself. But because of that, I had to add in this extra pulley here so that the cable comes up, goes over to get centered on the drum and that solved that problem. And as you can see, it works just fine. One thing you do have to be aware of is that when you have a load on this deck, if you let this go, it will start just falling, okay? So you gotta make sure you're in the locked position before you let go of that handle. So before I added those secondary pulleys to kind of center the cable, when I would raise the deck, the cable would wind up higher on one side of that uh, drum and the deck would start getting all sorts of caddy wonkus on me, but it seems to do pretty good now. And if it does get a little bit off, it's not the end, end of the world. What the hell was that? So I think what happened here is a combination of two different things that I did not forecast, if you will. If you take a quick look at the actual finger break, the top half of it, the top dies, it's a little crooked looking, right? It, the right hand side, the guide pin had come out of the upper die. So I think when I was cranking it up, I actually pinched that and that added extra weight to the, the winch system. The other thing is I just got done making those arbor plates that are sitting on the deck that the finger brake is sitting on. And those are really heavy by themselves. I had tested this winch system multiple times, at least a dozen times, if not more, and it worked great every single time. So I think the combination of the extra weight of the arbor plates and the finger brake, the weight of the finger brake, and the fact that the finger brake was getting pinched up all led to that pulley breaking. And then on top of all of that, those pulleys are a cast material. They've got a swivel on them. And I needed that swivel because of the way that I had attached it at the top to redirect the pulley. And that, that pulley just wasn't that strong. So I've already made brand new pulleys with eighth inch steel plate. I used the original brass pulley, a wheel out of the middle of it. And then I used quarter inch bolts top and bottom. Here's a couple photos of those. Ha! Huh. 
Huh. That pulley wasn't strong enough. We'll be down. Well, that's something I'm going to have to fix. Makes me wonder if the other one's going to break too. Let's get a pin in here just in case. Well, good to know. Cable's fine. I've raised and lowered this thing a dozen times now. Cheap ass junk. That sucks, because that's going to be a bugger to get back on there. Wow. All right, note to self, those pulleys are not strong enough. I think it's because I've got everything attached to it at the same time. So it does work. Those pulleys just aren't quite rated. So that's what's so great about them pins there. And these are the homemade arbor plates, inch and, a, inch and three eighths by 10 by 10. The deck, that's another thing you gotta watch out for. <laughs> this handle likes to be right there in my eyeball area. All right, so other than those uh, pulleys being garbage, Next big dealio for the brake itself is the air over hydraulic. This is a Vivor, V-E-V-O-R, right off of Amazon. It was 120 bucks shipped to the house and it's a 32 ton. Now there was a lot of mixed reviews on it, uh, you know, leaking or didn't work or, I checked it all out. I've rebuilt a couple bottle jacks before and as long as it's got good oil and all the seals are good, it should work just fine and it does. It's actually full on uh, fluid. I added a T to the fitting on the back. This banjo bolt right here was the only thing that I found wrong with the jack itself when I got it. This banjo bolt was not, not even tight. It wasn't even snug. It was not even finger tight. It was just loose. Uh, anyway, I added this T here so I can keep the hand valve if I want to use that, but I just tucked that away up top. And then I added a foot valve, which was 20 bucks off of Amazon. I did have to make uh, one slight adjustment on the top press plate here the piece that there was a piece of angle iron that was uh, about five sixteenths of an inch thick welded up there to keep the top of the ram in place and because this jack has the spring plate on it it's, a, it's spring assisted retraction this plate uh, takes up some of that space where the top of the ram would be so that piece right there is a piece I welded in so that it would still catch the top of the ram and hold it in position, but it would clear the gap from this plate. So I did have to make that adjustment. And then I added two bolts, one through each side or each corner. Well, just two, two total. And I also had to offset it a little bit because these hold down pins or the spring st spring pins they sit just funky so if it's not twisted just a little bit see how this is kind of angled out just a little bit if that's straight on but it still fits just fine it works just fine and it's really easy to run it's a lot quieter than i expected it to be as well now i was actually going to you know use the the finger brake to make a bracket so that this could just sit right here or even hang off of the, the bottom shelf there. But because of the hoses are in the way, you know, how, how do you route that? I think I'm just gonna leave it sitting. Yeah, I'll store it right here on that. And then when I need to use it, it can just sit down here like so, which it works great. That's it. So in addition to everything else with that jack, I also added a, a hand knob to it. Uh, I just found this plastic knob. I drilled out the center so that it would fit over the shank of that screw there and um, filed a little cross slot in it for that T to fit into. Then threw some safety wire on there, lock wire, and uh, it works pretty good. I, did, I, I put some super glue inside of that as well when I first seated it, but it locks down fine. It's no problemo. Now, as far as the jack itself working, 
it's not quite as fast as I thought it would be, um, but it's definitely faster and easier than doing it by hand. So the new air over hydraulic jack is about a half inch, three quarters of an inch shorter than the original bottle jack that came out of it. So it takes you know, an extra 10 seconds or so to, to take up that gap. And the, it, it is heavier than this one too. So these springs, even though I got them wrenched down pretty tight, they don't usually pull the plate all the way back up like it should. I make sure it gets all the way seated in my collar down here. I keep a little Allen wrench on a magnet. And boom, it's all set, ready to go. Just like that. And then you can see right here the gap and I can push it up a little bit by hand. I could tighten these springs a little bit, but it's fine the way it is. All right, so next is just the easy storage. Most of these ideas you can get just about anywhere, but magnets to hold the, the handle for the hand crank or the hand pump. I got a three quarter ratchet and socket set up here on another magnet for the finger brake. Now let's take a close look at the finger brake. This is the Swag Off-Road 20 ton finger brake. They specifically designed this to fit in the Harbor Freight 20 ton press. And I called them up on the phone just to make sure that this was gonna be strong enough to withstand a 30 ton. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's just dimensionally sized right for the Harbor Freight 20 ton. So that was good to know. So a couple of the little nuances that are you know different between the 20 ton Harbor Freight press and a, a bigger 30 ton press, your ram size right here, or the Arbor, whatever you wanna call that, it's not the same. This is the one that you get from Swag Off Road and it won't fit on my ram down here. So I had to weld some pipe together and I got it to work. I got some uh, set screws in there. The other thing is they give you these tabs the ones that I have perpendicular that are sticking out, those are meant to go where these ones are. But like I said, my rails are almost twice the, di or twice the thickness as the Harbor Freight 20 ton. So I put them in so that they point it out and then added in some quarter inch plate there, which once I get it in, I can just clamp it in place, even though it's not really that necessary. And the other thing you might notice from where you are See over here, there's not even a half inch gap. And over here, there's like a two inch gap or inch and a half. I didn't realize this until the whole thing was put back together. So just something, it's not a huge issue, but just something to pay attention to. If I had noticed this before I reassembled the whole thing and had it painted, I would have centered it all back up. Even though this is a made in USA unit, to me, it's just shoddy. There's a plate up under here that's not centered. That plate holds these down tubes, which are not centered. Everything's shifted over. You can even see right here, it's not centered. But as long as your main drive point or push point is pretty much centered up from the brake, the jack, and on this plate up here, you won't really have a problem. It would be better if it was centered, but it shouldn't be an issue here. And then with the finger brake itself, it comes with a piece of three inch angle that you weld in here, okay? Then to, to get a, a tighter bend radius, you can add in stacks of angle iron. So they recommend a two and a half and then a two inch, and I'll probably even go down to an inch and a half to put inside of this because your, your bend radius, not only is your bend radius going to be really wide, with that much, that three inch angle iron. The other issue you run into, and the first thing I wanna make, I, I, had, I ran into this, I've got lines here, about an inch and a half, an inch and a half, and in that three inch gap down there, you don't have the ability to bend anything less than an inch and a half tab off the end of it. So like if I wanted to make that inch and a half bend there, that's eh, just over an inch. I line that up, let's go from the back so you can see it. If I line that up on my line, on the finger there, I have nothing to, 
to bend against, all right? So your bend radius is, is a huge issue. Now with these other two in here, it will actually work. It's close. It catches right on the edge, but it, it'll work. Now the other thing that I just ran into, again, this is the first thing I wanna make, and I'm gonna do it here in a second. This is a VFD I'm gonna be use, using to drive a three-phase motor for a pipe bender. And, and you know, I don't have three-phase in the shop. So I got this VFD and I wanna mount it to a bracket and then mount this bracket to the wall. And then I'll put a little shield over it just as a dust shield. First thing I came across, I measured everything out the way I wanted it. I want about a six inch mounting surface. I can't make this in this setup. First off, my first bend is too short. So again, it won't make that bend because there's nothing to push against. Second off, even if I could make that bend, once I bend it up once, I can't curl it over. I was thinking of making a up and in kind of a bracket so it'll mount against the wall. Or I could do this to where I bend it out, flip it over, and then bend that up so I have a like that, right? That would work as well, except I make my first bend, I bend it up like that, I'd have to flip it over, and now I don't have room in here because that other piece is sticking down, right? So there's this stack that's right here, all of that space. This space right here makes it to where if you do have a short bend like that, let's say it was right there facing down, it can't, right? They sell what are called gooseneck dies, and I'm probably gonna have to order a pair. That would allow me to make one bend there, all right, so bend it up so now it's like that. Then, especially when it's a little short piece, I think you, at least with their kit, you can go up to almost two inches of a bend and then bend it in again on itself. That gooseneck die, I'll throw a little picture up here so you can see it, but that would allow me to get the bend I need out of this size. But since I don't have that, and I want this thing on the wall, I'm gonna do this right now. So now my plan is to bend this that way. Then once that's bent, I can pull it out, flip it around and bend this one. Oh no, no, I was gonna bend the outside one first because I made this gap wide enough to where it would clear all this garbage on the end. I'm really surprised at the amount of control you have with the foot pedal. I thought I would have to be, do most of my bending with that, and this thing is surprisingly good. Now I'm just eyeballing all of this. Fat finger and eyeballing, swag. Maybe that's why they call it swag. That turned out basically perfect. I'm really happy with that. So I do have a couple angle finders, but again, I'm not really that worried about this. But a magnetic angle finder would be really useful for getting those precision bends. Uh, anyway, I'm just looking for close on this. This is not precision. Now, th this one is going to be a little bit tougher because I got to weasel it in there. Which I might even have to, like, if I go in from the back side, then I'm not gonna be able to bend this side. How do I get that out of there? There's not quite enough room. Unless maybe I take a couple fingers out on one side. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, there we go. Now that stupid uh, repeatable bend thing is in the way. So that one I ended up over bending just a smidge. I like it.
gotta admit, <laughs> that turned out way better than I was I could have even hoped for. So that will now get mounted to there. So this will go on the wall, then this will get mounted there. Now I have plenty of space for cooling. And uh, I mean, it's deeper than I wanted it to be. I don't, I didn't really want it sticking off the wall that far. I mean, crap, we're probably 10, 11 inches right there, but I don't have a way yet without getting those uh, gooseneck uh, dies to do this part closer, if that makes sense. Let's do one more. This part right down in here, hopefully the camera can catch this. Right down in there. Watch just as the die bottoms out, then you'll see this part kind of tweak up a little bit and peel away from the angle iron in the bottom. As soon as it starts coming off, that seems to be about where 90 degrees is. Like right there, see that gap? I might go just a smidge more like that. Let's see how close that got us. I mean, really close. It could go just a smidge more, but probably just a quick tweak like that'll do it too. All right, let's do the other one. got bent a little too far so you saw what I did there but I can bend that back by hand look at that all right I can't be uh, any happier with what I got going here uh, I'll give an update if and when I get the fit uh, the uh, the gooseneck fingers for this thing that would make stuff like this where I want to have that shorter uh, double bend make that possible all right so for the budget build side of it let's talk numbers brass tacks right quick so I ha fortunately, I have a lot of supplies on hand. We'll start right at the top. I had the, the winch, the hand crank winch. I had the cables, I had the pulleys, I had the magnets, I had the rebar, the steel stock that I used for the arbor plates. I had that on hand. Now that was a bugger to get it cut, but it was all on hand. The only things I bought were the jack itself, the Aerover Hydraulic, which is about 120 shipped off of Amazon. The finger brake kit, I called Swag Off-Roads. They, they don't give any discounts, but it was about $400 shipped to the house. The actual uh, press itself cost uh, 200 bucks off a of marketplace. Every other bit of stock on this thing I had on hand. If you had to add up that extra stuff, you're talking a couple extra hundred dollars. So I would say you're still under $1,000 for a setup like this. You can't even find a, a decent finger brake for less than $1,000. So to have something like this usable as an actual shot press, as a press brake, as a finger brake, all in one shot, air over hydraulic on top of that, this is one heck of a deal for me right now because I've been wanting a finger brake for years. I'm gonna start making like little tooling brackets, tool holder brackets, that kind of stuff. I've really been wanting a finger brake. So I am super excited about this. Now for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna play through the process from start to finish. It'll be fast forward, it won't take very long, but a lot of really frustrating parts. It, it took almost two weeks for this entire project. Now I was tinkering with other, other things during that time. But if you do like this kind of stuff, please take a quick second to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Enjoy the rest of the video, we'll see you soon.
right here was the issue. As long as the cables wind up evenly, make sure that your, your two cables are pushed all the way to one side when you start cranking. Then they'll wind up together across, they'll overlap, and then start coming back. And that's what happened here. Now for the oxy torch, I rigged up this collar. This is a shaft collar, a 3 8 shaft collar. I drilled it out a little bit bigger so that I could ride right on the edge of this quarter inch plate. Voila! One homemade arbor plate. 